Ladies and gentlemen, there are several certain truths that are universal in society. Number one, death. Number two, taxes. And number three, computers being better than human beings at chess. I mean, honestly, it is disgusting at this point. Engines can start games with like two less pawns, two extra moves to the human. It's it's awful. I mean, and then and, and they still win and the game's not even close. But what happens if you pair the best hope of humanity, the one human who is above the rest, with the best engine in the world. I'm talking Magnus Carlsen versus Stockfish 15. With one special caveat, Magnus Carlsen costs way too much money per hour to rent out to actually play Stockfish 15. So in this video, I paired Stockfish 15 from a cloud server with the Play Magnus bot. A couple of games of Age 29 Magnus, the most recent one, of course, uh, from last year, rated 2864. And in this video, I am going to take you through the games uh, of basically two bots going to war and we're just gonna spectate like it's some sort of movie it's gonna be absolutely amazing so stockfish started game number one with the move e4 and magnus i was actually shocked responded exactly how he's programmed this is magnus's opening he played this exclusively in the world championship match not against nepo but against fabiano caruana and magnus's main weapon there uh was the sveshnikov sicilian uh, Stockfish played the Rosalimo instead, bishop b5, and after g6, it took on c6, and it castled, and Magnus played bishop g7. So black here wants to play e5, queen c7, and then f5. This is like, I mean, just in a very, very, very tiny nutshell, the entire game plan of black. Black locks down the center, and white has a couple of approaches, like does white want to play for a very quick d4 to open up the position? Does white want to lock everything down on the light squares because we just traded our light squared bishop and then try to expand in a different way? Now, thus far, we have followed basically the main line uh, of the position. Um, now, castles is not exactly the main line, but a lot of these positions sort of flow into each other. Uh, and here, Stockfish started sort of going off on its beaten path in the, on its own path in the forest. Now, when you're in a group and an individual walks off on a path in the forest, you kind of think that you, that you shouldn't let them do that because they're probably going to die. Uh, Stockfish, you're like, yeah, 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 you, you just go do what you do. We see you back at the campsite. Stockfish plays a4, which is a really fascinating move. Basically, it's asking uh, Magnus if he is going to play a5, because if he doesn't play a5, Stockfish itself is just going to play a5, not developing its knight, not developing its bishop. Stockfish senses that for the future of this game, uh, the queenside expansion by black is necessary in order to stay in the game. But not all bots see the game the same way. And, you know, Magnus, truly in his own fashion, doesn't always like to advance pawns beyond a certain measure. So a5 might be an overcommitment because now black is really unable to play successfully b5 in the future if white plays knight c3. There was obviously something that... Uh, the play Magnus bot did not like, so instead, it allowed Stockfish to put the pawn on a5. Stockfish really liked that, and then it sort of went back to putting pawns on light squares to negate the development of the light squared bishop of black. Uh, now, Magnus plays knight to h5 here, looking to play knight to f4. Stockfish is like, wow, what an absolutely stupid idea. I am going to force the bishops off the board. It does not care about the bishop pair. It is bishops versus knights. And now it plays a very fascinating move. Engines are so good at, well, Stockfish is so good at these little intricate, like, details that you think don't change much about the position. For instance, if something like knight c3 happened and the queen had gone back and, like, just, just a very small thing, black would have gone e5 a while ago. I mean, black would have played e5, bishop e6, f5, but... Since it's Stockfish's move, and it thinks in a way of maximum inconvenience, Stockfish plays e5, and that sets up a couple of things. That sets up rook e4, which is really unpleasant, uh, forcing the queen back and literally trapping it, by the way. So rook e4, rook h4, that is disgusting. Have you ever seen a queen reduced to such nothingness? I mean, seriously. Um, and the queen gets trapped either way. The queen also gets trapped if queen f5... Uh, g4, knight g5, and now knights. This is, look, look at this position. What? This is the most sophisticated bear trap ever. All right? So, bishop f5 prevents that, but now we have knight c3, and the pressure is going to continue. The Magnus bot lashes out with b5, basically saying, I don't care about the fact that you have that pawn over there. Stockfish here plays a move I don't understand at all. That move is b3. 
As far as my eyes can tell, this just completely weakens this. I mean, I, honestly, I, I, I absolutely don't understand the move b3. I don't get it. Maybe it's trying to prevent queen b4 from attacking two things. Like maybe that, like it was a defending kind of move. I, I don't know. Maybe it was trying to prevent something with c4. Okay, it seems like maybe that was the case. I don't know. Maybe it was trying to prevent b4, b3. That might be it, actually. So, for example, maybe b4 and then b3 was strong. Nope, that's not... I, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. b3, that's why I just watch. Rook d8. Uh, now we kick the queen out and we go knight g3 looking to damage the structure. So the queen comes back. Are we going to have a repetition of moves for the memes? Absolutely not. No. Uh, this improvement of the position is very marginal, but it's there. And now uh, you probably will not be able to guess Stockfish's next move. I mean, it's, it's just so ridiculous. Uh... Yeah, Stockfish plays a6. I, I mean, when Stockfish played a4, this is what it had in mind. It had in mind that it was going to march through the queen side and basically be like, well, I'm a problem now. And if I ever get a7, you're just going to lose the game because my pawn is all the way up there. So I'm going to negate the movement of your pieces. I'm completely dominating the bishops here. They're just staring directly into walls. And I'm, I'm, now it's my turn to, uh, to break through. And now the Magnus bot starts to really dislike its position. Uh, and starts to make a series of inaccurate moves like rookie three, rook f8, uh, rookie eight, rook f8. Like, look at this, rookie black doesn't know what to do. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is the Magnus bot not playing the move f6? Uh, it's actually kind of insane. Uh, it's not playing f6 because that does nothing. If knight f5, queen f5, it would just go here. Stockfish would just play the move rookie four. I say, Levy, what are you talking about? That's a free pawn. Yeah, you're still completely barricaded. It's it's insane. Stockfish created a, a force field on all three sides of the board here against uh, the Magnus bot. It blocked the queen side, it paralyzed the queen side, and it just stopped everything in the middle and on the king side as well. It's insane. So, rook e8, rook f8, and now we begin kind of the process of, yeah, breaking out in the position, and that's it. c4, you remove the defender of the c5 pawn, we trade, c5 is lost, and I told you a while ago. If a7 is won, it's just game over. So what does uh, black do? Rook f3. If Magnus sacks a rook in front of your king like this and gets in and checks you, you're like, oh my god. Stockfish is like, what, what, a, what a stupid idea. I mean, my god. Bishop e5. And look at this. Look at this fancy. Look at this fancy finish by Stockfish. Stockfish has a flair for the dramatic. Sacks its queen to promote the a pawn that went a4 so long ago. Um, engines play till mate which means you should play till mate too. At least Stockfish plays till mate. Uh, yeah, we have a queen trade, and um, now a very nice little trick here to get to this pawn. You attack it, you force it forward, you check, and now this is a very easily winning position, but I will just show you, just for instructional value, right? Uh, bringing all your pieces forward together, and then uh, getting to the base of the black position, locating the weakness, uh, getting to the weakness, and now just understanding that black has to make moves too. You don't need to rush anything. Black to move, black, black just has to lose something. Black can't move either of these two pieces, and if black plays g5, you're just happily going to trade everything, but you could even go here, removing the defense of the bishop. So, Tuxwan, Z-U-G, Z-W-A-N-G. Keep that term in mind. When you're trying to just remove the defenses from a position, sometimes the easiest thing to do is do nothing. So Stockfish gets in, it takes everything, and uh, it even sacrifices its rook at the end and gets into the end game for absolutely no reason. Uh, and the Magnus bot resigned in this position. So game one goes to Stockfish in an absolutely dominant display in the Ross Salimo. Now, Stockfish also had a game with the black pieces. Let's see what happened here. Uh, I guess we, it doesn't really matter who we can look at it from, but... Uh, yeah, the Magnus bot went for a London, which really surprised me. And we had this line. And here, black can play in a variety of ways. Black can develop the bishop, black can play e6. But naturally, Stockfish suggested the most direct and aggressive approach possible uh, for the position. Let's look at it from Stockfish's perspective. I, I feel like, you know, I feel like it's the 3700. We should watch how it thinks. Uh, now, dc, queen, b2 is the idea here. And the black queen just hangs out in white's position. I mean, like, what better line to give to an engine, right? Now bishop b5. Like, castles. Knight d4. I mean, white's initiative is so strong here. Oh, Stockfish is like, so what? I don't understand. I'm just going to castle. What's the big deal? Magnus plays bishop d3. Now, the engine here has to play queen b4 and try to uh, get out. Why? Let's say something like a6 happens. Um, a3 traps the queen. 
Suddenly, the queen has absolutely no moves. You're now threatening to trap it with knight to e2. So black is in some serious trouble. So black has to step out of that completely obscure queen trap by playing queen b4. Uh, knight f3 now goes back. Rook f c8 and bd4. So the knight gets replaced in the center of the board. They trade pawns again. And here Stockfish begins a series of moves that are absolutely beyond my comprehension. Retreating the bishop back to e8. This just gets out of the way, but there's still another bishop in the way. That bishop was defended. Okay, now we attack the rook. Magnus trades off the knight, though. You see the rook is hanging, but the queen is hanging, so we have this. And Stockfish says, well, I have one weak pawn away from the rest. Let me go attack you with that weak pawn. All right? It loves flank pawn pushes. And here it says, in preparation for the rest of the battle, I'm going to slide my other bishop back to the 8th rank. This is nuts. I mean, no human being plays like this, right? Like bishop e8, bishop f8. It's like, all right, now what? White plays rook c1. It's a good move. Black improves the position with just h6. Just an improving move, making a luft for the king. And now we have c4. c4 is a very interesting move. It's suddenly, like, you look at the eval, suddenly Stockfish is not so sure about its position. But what does Stockfish do? Knight h5. You cannot take this because this, and obviously I threaten to take the bishop and then take this, so we have this move. And then here, something really dramatic happens. D takes c4 is played. And D takes c4, you would think uh, you just recapture, but you don't. Because if you notice, there's queen e5. That's just a hanging bishop. What? How did the Magnus bot blunder like this? Well, the Magnus bot didn't blunder like this because black's pawn is not moving anywhere because your queen is lost, right? So you can play knight f3 here, and you can play f4 here. Right, you can play actually either of these moves. You can defend the bishop and then take this back. So that's exactly what Magnus does. Now, since Stockfish can't take uh, the bishop or the pawn in fear of losing the queen and just not having a good position, probably the knight has to get back into the game or the queen should sidestep or you can throw the pawn forward uh, because obviously if you take the bishop, you lose your queen. So Stockfish takes the bishop and loses its queen. What? Stockfish saw better than the play Magnus bot. Apparently, f4 here had to be played. And the difference is that if I take your bishop and we get into this situation, I can take this pawn. There's no back rank mate. The king gets out. That is the major difference. When you play knight f3 and I sack my queen, there is no queen d3. And that one simple detail makes it completely impossible to win this pawn back because black has a series of moves. So Stockfish said f4 is slightly like equal, is very close to equal. When this happened, Stockfish on my browser doesn't even realize how bad this is. Stockfish 15 was like, it's minus five. It just ended the game. It was like stupid human, even though this wasn't a human. And how did it do it? Well, it went to defend the pawn. Then it brought back its knight. Then it brought back its knight again to hit the bishop. And then it started attacking the bishop. Then it took control of the C file because its rook was hanging. It didn't want to trade rooks. Then here it went bishop b4. Look at this. Have you ever seen a queen quite like this one? I just asked you that in the last game. The queen is the most powerful piece. It's in a box. It can't even move. Here comes rook c2, rook c5. Knight c4. Look at this. It sacks its rook. It's beating the Magnus bot with just a rook and two pawns. This is unbelievable. Rook a8. It's like take my bishop with check. There's no way to stop rook c1. Absolutely savage. Stockfish saw all of that. Guys, this is the, I mean, that's just disgusting. It got down here, it won the queen, and Magnus just resigned. Oh my god. That is unbelievable. Knight to f3 played, and it just went takes, consolidated everything, and literally saw until the end of the game. It put the queen in a box, it put a, in a prison cell, rook c2, sat, oh, this is, ju this is just unbelievable. The back rank here is a, is a huge problem. Rook a1 doesn't even help. Knight c5, it, this is, it's like legitimately insane. Bl white is just unable to move. These two pawns completely dominate the white position. It's beyond, beyond understanding. I mean, just completely nuts. Stockfish up 2-0. Now, I felt kind of bad. I was like, wait a minute. You know what? I feel like I'm not being fair uh, to Magnus because Magnus is very, very strong now, but he has said many times 
The favorite player that he has was him from many years ago. In a press conference, yes, Magnus Carlsen literally said that. If you don't know this clip, you should go look it up. And then you should get in the comments of that clip and be like, I'm here from the Levy video. I always like seeing that. I, 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 I shout out a video and then you guys go to it. And then it's like, oh, I'm here from the Levy video. Yeah, it was an interview before his world championship match against Fabiano Caruana. And Fabi was like, oh, you know, this is my favorite player. And Magnus is like, my favorite player in history is me from four years ago. Well, in the year 2014, Magnus was at his peak. He got to the rating of 2889. So obviously, this really is the best hope for humanity. So let's see how it goes. This time, I made Stockfish play in English, E5. And we got this obscure English opening where Black did not play for C6, D5. Uh, and instead opted to just kind of play like that. Now, look at the way Stockfish plays this. Stockfish plays a3, e3, corralling the bishop, right? Black plays a5, preventing b4. And Stockfish just plays every pawn a little bit. It doesn't rush with d4, and it doesn't rush with castling either. It's kind of interesting, right? It, it thinks b3 is totally okay. So here, the Magnus bot is like, well, bishop d7. And now, bishop, well, queen c2, just making some strange kind of like... Like dancing, you know, like dancing in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the ring. Like not like, you know, not throwing any punches just yet. And this is where things get interesting. So the Magnus bot is like, well, stupid, you should have castled, right? Because now you can't. I got queen c8. Like you, you should have castled when you had the chance. And what are you going to do now that you can't play d4 because your queen stepped off of this? And Stockfish looks at its opponent and says, my God, you are naive. G4. Uh-oh. That's bad. It's not castling. It is now using its king side as an attacking mechanism. So here, we have knight e7. Couple of ideas behind the move knight e7. All right? Bishop c6, definitely one of the ideas. Wants to trade off this powerful bishop. Okay? Uh, the other idea is to play c6, d5. The other idea is to go to h4. Very, very flexible move knight e7, right? So you would think that Stockfish would be like, all right, well, I don't want to overexpand. It just plays f4. It just does not give an f, okay? f4, look at this. Now here you see my Stockfish says, uh, it's my browser based. Obviously the one I, one I played it against was mine. It says knight g6 is back to equal, right? It says the position is back to equal. My browser based engine does not even suggest the move g5. It thinks g5 is a terrible move. Stockfish 15, however, was like, yeah, so what? If Magnus gets to take my bishop with check, king d1, and look at, look, look at my engine reconsidering. My engine is weaker, of course. It's browser-based, right? It's also not, uh, it's not as powerful as a cloud-based, but cloud-based engine here saw the whole thing and was like, yep, I'm not going to castle. I'm going to move my king. I'm going to lose the bishop pair. Good luck. Good luck. Which is kind of insane because when that knight started its journey, e7, g6, h4, g2, you'd think it would be a good... Nope. Nope. Now we have rookie eight. Now, of course, this is not getting taken, right? And the craziest thing is, Stockfish is also not taking on g7. Stockfish does not want to waste time taking a pawn that leads to nothing. Instead, it, it develops a knight and, goes, and tries to go knight e7. The Magnus bot plays bishop c6. Knight e7 now doesn't work because after it takes takes, there is knight takes e3 and then bishop takes h1. And uh, white's position completely falls apart. Queen h3 is next. Uh, and the rook covers the back rank. So the engine plays queen e4, hitting the knight and, de and defending this with a pin and walking directly into this. Knight gets out of the way of danger. Bishop b2, completely unafraid of this move because after queen f4, it is only one individual whose king is truly weak. All right, bishop takes the knight. Very important here. Pawn takes the knight for a couple of reasons. Restricting black's pawn play. Stockfish senses, well, they both sense that this is headed for an endgame now, right? Magnus is the human king of endgames. Stockfish is the engine king of engines. It's the engine king of everything. So it's going to this phase of the game, and the best thing now is to trade the queen so you never get mated. Notice how this pawn has just survived. Well, now it's time to take. Now we're in the endgame phase. Every capture, every pawn, and time is on a kind of different level than it was in the other position. Notice Magnus plays f6, barricading against the bishop, and then a couple moves later, he's going to take on g7. Don't worry. You see the engine expanding here with white. Magnus breaking back a series of pawn trades now. Rotating the rook over to f1 with the idea of getting it involved on this side of the board. But also a hidden idea here 
of the maneuver with the king. This king has walked the edge of the earth here. It's just walked through the fire. Notice how black is just defending against white's infiltration. White has doubled up on the F-file. King B1 and King A2. Before the game can even really... The end game can even begin. The, the king is walked to safety. Stockfish understands the king is beta. It needs to hide the king so it's never going to be in danger. Now, white is a little bit better here, but how is white going to prove that? Well, white's going to start to expand with the only pawn it can, right? Now, we lock that side of the board. There is no more play there, and we're hoping that in the long run, this is a liability. Because these pawns are solid for white, but this knight is the stuck defending this, and that knight can't get aggressive if it wants to stay defending the a5 pawn, which white can win in the future. Stockfish, and Stockfish plays knight h5. And now Stockfish is like, all right, bishop c1 back. I'm going to try to play d3 and get my bishop in the game to g5. That's going to be a problem. So to prevent d3, black plays uh, bishop d4, looking for rook g2 ideas. All right? And now, finally, Magnus makes an inaccuracy. Magnus tries to trade off his problems. The bot tries to trade off the problems. D5, which looks like a very natural move. And now, a combination, all right? Remember how McGregor ended up beating Alvarez? How Alvarez kept, like, punching and McGregor landed that combo at the end? Or the, um, was it the Donald Cerrone combination? Who did he land that nasty combo on with, like, the head kick or the liver kick at the end? It wasn't Miles Jury. He fought Miles. See, you guys tell me in the comments. I don't remember. It was a beautiful, it looked like some anime combination. Also, you can look up that clip. So, you know, you, gotta, you, got, you guys got homework. End this video and go to see those clips. The Magnus Press Conference, the Donald Cerrone combination with the animation. His, like, li hair lights on fire. It's pretty cool. Anyway, knight f6 check. Step one. Step two, attack the rook. Step three, go here. This is pure engine stuff here, okay? The king is paralyzed. The king is absolutely stuck on that back rank. And watch as Stockfish gallops in with the knight that cannot be captured because mate is stopped and gets to c4. And folks, I told you a long time ago, I told you that a pawn was a problem. Once that a pawn is won, it does not matter. Look at this. It doesn't matter that you can take me with check. I'm just going to move my king. This is more important. And... If you look very closely at this position, like this position, this is mate. Black is stuck completely on the back rank. Black now has to guard an endless series of mates. It doesn't matter how deep we get into this endgame. Black is stuck guarding check and mate. The king is completely cut off on every single square. So now Stockfish just uses this throughout this endgame and uses its one joker card, which is the A-pawn. Rook B5, A6, doesn't matter. Look at this, Rook F6, Rook B7, Rook D8, and just very simple here. Let's trade, I'm gonna rotate over, and I'm going Rook B7 on the next move. I don't care if you go here, because I am giving you a check, and when you block, I'm still going Rook B7. Rook G7 check is unstoppable. This would lead to a checkmate, doesn't matter where, literally any move on the G file except G8. Look how brutal this is. This is unreal. Rook b7, and now the knockout, bishop e5. One square, one tempo. That's what it comes down to. If you take I queen, if you don't take I queen, and this endgame comes down to one pawn. And very simply here, this bishop covers this. The b4 pawn is one, and you, you do not do this. Stockfish is not dumb. You cover that. You win this. And that's it. You get to h2. You play a few more moves. And the Magnus bot resigns once again. This one was not a middle game dominance. This one was a complex middle game that led to a super interesting end game that was ultimately decided by one weakness on the A5 on, on the A5 square and White's activity on the king side. Black made one overextension that moved d5, and Stockfish saw like an eight-move combo. I mean, just amazing. Let me know if you enjoyed this type of content. I will happily pair some more bots against each other, and I will see you in the next video. Get out of here.